It's been a while since we've busted you out, you little flaccid ball, you. But you know what? You can join the club because Arm Neos is holding your very much worse version of you, a Pokeball, in his big-ass monstrous hand. And it's probably like you, flaccid. And unlike this Ultra Ball, it didn't almost crash his Steam Deck trying to put Windows 10 on it. I'm still salty about that baby back BS. Let's dive on into today's video, shall we? Feels good to be back from vacation. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. It is your host with the most, Avery LR32, here and destroy the ever living boo boo stain. Off of that subscribe button, swing climbing further beyond the 1K ladder. I'm truly appreciative to each and every single one of you for supporting the channel. So give yourself a pat on the back. Maybe give yourself a hug. Go ahead and air five me. <laughs> Whatever it is that you want to do, sit back and relax. Maybe you got me just going on in the background while you're mowing your lawn or doing your kid's hair or setting a car on fire. Whatever it is that you're doing with your day. Maybe you're setting a Yu-Gi-Oh card on fire. <laughs> but... <laughs> That was random. But uh, I want to talk today about something that I feel like no longer exists in Yu-Gi-Oh! And it's something I've sort of thought about on and off. And also I thought about it as I was getting ready to film this video because I was like, oh shit, it's late and I need to film a video. <laughs> and it's something that I've actually kind of been messing around with as of late. And that's FTKs. Now, I know what you're thinking. Avery, what the heck are you talking about? Hear me out. FTKs in Yu-Gi-Oh! used to be such an issue when they came up. For those of you who haven't been playing Yu-Gi-Oh for years and years on end like I have, you know, FTKs in Yu-Gi-Oh were much harder to deal with, especially before we had things like Effect Valor in Duelist Revolution, uh, Droll and Lockbird out of Star Strike Blast, and now of course we have things like Nibiru, Sphere Mode, Kaijus, uh, Spooky Dogwood, Ghost Ogre, Ash Blossom, you name it. We have all these things. But if you've ever seen a video talking about FTKs of the past in Yu-Gi-Oh, you know, let's say Frog FTK. When Frog FTK was at its prime and it won a world championship, I believe it won like a national championship as well, but it may have just been worlds. I could be wrong. Um, you know, the only thing that we had access to stopping the deck was Effect Veiler. Now, I believe, no, I'm actually incorrect. We did not get Max C until Storm of Ragnarok, which was the legendary six samurai set. Um, and we also got like Odin, Thor, and Loki synchros, things like that. Um, but outside of Effect Veiler and DD Crow uh, as an extension, we really didn't have much of a way to stop Frog FTK. You know, the only way that you really had of stopping Frog FTK was if you DD Crowed the Ronin Toten and hoped that the opponent wasn't playing more than one. Or Effect Veilering the Substitute and hoping that the opponent didn't have any sort of extensions to play through that. Or if they played out their hand correctly, then they could still play through the Veiler. You know, sometimes having just that one Veiler in your hand just wasn't enough. Now that we've expanded our options so much, I feel like it is so much easier to deal with FTKs in pretty much every shape and form. And to that point, I feel like because of that, FTKs are largely dead in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, the last time that we saw an FTK do anything, and when I say do anything, I don't mean like it won your locals of like five people. <laughs> like I'm talking like regional YCS or nationals level. The only FTK that I can think of off the top of my head that's really done something at a high level event like that is Chicken Game FTK, just thinking off the top of my head. And that was 2017, 2016 maybe? Like... That was such a long time ago. Like, I I think we had Ash Blossom then. I could be wrong. I know that we had Droll and Lockbird and things like that. I know that we didn't have Nibiru. Granted, Nibiru wouldn't have really helped in that case because Chicken Game FTK was mostly spell-based along with Magical Explosion and things like that. But you even look at something like Morphtronic Telephone and the Telephone FTK surrounding that, that card and then by extension the decks, obviously, you know... It goes to show you how much hand traps have evolved and how much the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! has evolved that you really don't have to be afraid of an FTK anymore unless, like, you know, your locals is just not prepared for it or, like, the format as a whole is just not prepared for it. You know, if everybody in the room is playing Nibiru and or Sphere Modes, then Telephone FTK really isn't going to work because you can just Nibiru them out of existence. You know, uh, if you affect Valor or Imperm, you know, the telephones, when they really need to go off, then 
they're not going to win the game. You're going to win because they can't FTK you. And so I'm not saying that like FTKs are just something we no longer have to worry about in Yu-Gi-Oh! I think that just by card game design, FTKs are always going to be a thing at some point or another in a card game's lifespan. You know, you're going to eventually hit a point to where the card pool just hits that right flow, I guess, for lack of a better term. It just hits that niche point where an FTK can slide on in. You know, you're always going to have OTKs in Yu-Gi-Oh! now just because the game is so fast. You know, if Sword Soul puts over 8,000 damage on the board going second, that's an OTK. Or if they do that on turn five, that's an OTK. You know what I mean? And so it's it's something that just has to be dealt with but i feel like i feel like that's the one of the main reasons why hand traps were created in a much more higher number than like what we had back in the day with basically just effect veiler and max c and then dd crow and then later on joel mockbird like that was all that we had for the longest time until we got like the ghost sisters and things like that because i think konami realized hey the game is getting super fast and it's getting faster and faster the power creep has gone from year over year to set to set arguably that we need a way to kind of put these decks in check or be able to have decks like right now with sprite where they're playing 12 to 15 hand traps just to beat tier element but yet they can still function as a sprite deck doing whatever it is that they want to do and so I feel like because of that, it's really helped really in FTKs because now they can't do what they want to do as consistently. You know, it was different with something like Chicken Game FTK, where you play three Chicken Game, three Pseudo Space, which would just copy the Chicken Game, then you could still draw, get to your Magical Explosion and uh, Blasting of the Runes, stuff like that. You still had Draw and Lockbird, but the issue was, was that it was mostly spell-based. So like... Ash Blossom could only hit one draw card. I'm assuming that we had Ash back then. I don't think that we did. You know, obviously, Droll and Lockbird would shut down the whole deck. Um, but if you didn't hit the Droll, you just sort of lost. You can make the same argument for, like, Nibiru against, you know, Cash Tira or, you know, Telephone FTK. But against those decks, since they do have monster effects that they want to try and get off, you have, by that point multiple monsters that you can use to stop those monster effects you know you don't just have to rely on hitting a draw in your opening hand you could have nibiru ash ghost ogre you know whatever it is and so you know it, it kind of begs the question now at least for me like what's the point of even playing an ftk anymore unless like you're just trying to troll your locals and like even then if you go back to your locals every week or however many days a week they have a Yu-Gi-Oh tournament and people realize that you're playing an FTK deck they're going to side deck just for you and then you're going to lose because of it. You know, I I remember seeing that years ago at some locals that I went to where my dad before way before Mystic Mime is everything, he would play Chamber. Well then sure enough, he my dad and I would show up and people were suddenly adjusting their side decks before the tournament started just to beat my dad. Like I remember there was one player in particular, he would always side deck Spell of Pain for my dad's chamber deck and like it was hilarious because it wasn't good against anything else but he side decked three copies just to try and beat my dad and so you know you got to keep that in mind even when you're just playing an ftk at locals like people are going to side deck stuff just to beat your ftk for locals whether it's nibiru droll some random card that just beats your deck and it's it's really funny in that regard but it's also like you know i don't think that Unless we get something absolutely insane or hand traps get banned or limited in some way, shape, or form, you know, down the line, I don't really think we ever have to worry about seeing an FTK, you know, at, you know, topping top tier events. And I say worry because you have to understand that FTKs, in, at least in my humble opinion, are much more unhealthier for the game of Yu-Gi-Oh than dealing with a tier zero format. You know, people say, oh, a tier zero format fucking sucks, tier element, blah, 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 blah. But at least in a tier zero format, you can see the problems that are with the game and Konami can fix that. Whereas with FTK decks running around, they have to like just bring down the ban hammer and ban like 10 cards, make sure that like it's not consistent and it's not a thing anymore. And people have to deal with that toxic shit for God knows how long, you know? I mean, just look at all the FTKs in the past that we've had to deal with. I mean, God, I remember playing Frog Monarch and uh, there was this guy at my locals at the time who was playing Frog FTK. And I only won because I was able to Valor his Swap Frog. He needed that to go off. And then I was able to, you know, take game one and game three from him because of it. But it was dangerous as hell. Like it straight up was dangerous. So guys, let me know what you think down in the comments below about this. Do you feel like FTK still have a chance in today's game? Am I just completely wrong about this? I just feel like 
FTKs really aren't much of a thing anymore in Yu-Gi-Oh. You know, they're too much glass cannons. They're not that consistent anymore. Maybe one day they will be, but I don't think so right now. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I will see you in the next video.